how's it going? Okay, I thought I'd share today with some of my uh, fermented vegetables. I've decided I to make today's with cabbage and jalapenos. I used my food processor and grated up four small cabbage and about a dozen jalapenos and I minced up a pretty good section of ginger root. So after you get your cabbage, most people just chop it. And if you have more teeth than I do, that'd be the way to go. But this way, I don't have any trouble chewing it. But what I've done is with the canning salt, I, the canning salt, I used about three tablespoons as I layered this cabbage in here, I spread canning salt over it. You don't want to use iodized salt. You want to use, use sea salt or canning salt because the iodine in the iodized salt kills this process of lacto-fermentation. What the salt does is it gets in there and takes, makes the juices come out of the cabbage and the juice does the fermenting process with the salt keeps the environment free of bad bacteria until the lactobacilli take over and do the preserving process. That juice is already really running. Other people just put their cabbage in a container and start beating it down with a wooden masher. I have a favorited video on YouTube of a guy just taking his cabbage fresh from the garden and chopping it up with a nulu and pounding it into a bucket. And that would be a, a really good way to do it too. But like I say, I have to have my stuff chopped up pretty fine because I have no bottom teeth and they're getting, there's the jalapenos. Some people weight the vegetables down under the liquid with, by putting the leaves on top and then weighting it down and in her book nourishing traditions sally fallon advocates just putting the lid on tight and letting it ferment that way i found that if i put the lid on tight the ferment just kind of stops so every little while i'll go and ease the lid off and let the juice the gases out i, I imagine it's carbon monoxide or dioxide and I did some gingered carrots and matter of fact Jake go in there and get that gingered carrots out of the refrigerator that I just did lately gingered carrots? yeah it's an orange it's carrots that I fermented last oh and by the way with jalapenos most of you probably want to use plastic cooking gloves. There, put it right there. Thank you. After the video, I might want some. All right. That's gotten really juicy. It's time to mash it in the jar. I don't know whether to use a funnel or just do it this way. I'll start off this way. Go. 
built so Mash it in. Probably could have used this little smaller jar. I have some two and a half pint jars that would have probably worked, but we'll see how this does. Okay. All right. Mash that in too. Don't look at the juices up. <laughs> After the first day, about 24 hours, if you see that the juice isn't covering the veggies. You can come in, pour in a little bit of distilled water or filtered water. Whatever you do, don't use chlorinated water straight out of the tap because that will kill the process as well. But there is a batch of sauerkraut with jalapenos and ginger. Uh, this is a batch of gingered carrots that's just been refrigerating a couple of days. I imagine it's really good about now. So I'll start eating on it. This is a batch of just beets, as it says, because sometimes I mix other things with beets. I really like what they call a chutney with uh, grated apples and beets, but this, this beets are good just by themselves or with turnips. This is bell peppers, onion, and carrots. And there's some poblano peppers in there too. That's been really good. The carrots have gotten tender enough that even I can chew them. This is sauerkraut from just cabbage. That's all there is, is cabbage and salt. The kids really like that. And this is a treat I really like. This is cauliflower, green beans, and little carrot pieces. And again, all of it has fermented to the place where I can eat it, even without bottom teeth. Okay, that's my version of fermented vegetables.